Nestled among the scenic hills of Wiltshire, Stonehenge has sparked endless curiosity about its creation and the people responsible. While its purpose and cosmic alignments continue to intrigue, the identity of its builders remains a topic of speculation, giving rise to a variety of fascinating theories. The ancient Britons, those elusive early inhabitants of this ancient landscape, are often credited with the creation of Stonehenge. Yet the true story may be far stranger than we've dared to imagine. Beginning around 3100 BC, they likely worked over generations to transport and position the enormous sarsen and bluestones, utilising methods still debated by experts. Some argue that Stonehenge arose in stages, with each generation contributing to its structure, adapting it to shifting cultural needs. This gradual evolution highlights its dynamic role in Neolithic society. Stonehenge's evolution spanned centuries, beginning with its first stage when a circular enclosure over 330 feet wide was constructed. This included a ditch, inner and outer banks, and 56 pits known as Aubrey Holes, initially thought to hold wooden posts but later identified as likely containing Welsh blue stones. Human cremation burials were also discovered within the enclosure, making it one of Britain's largest cemeteries of the era. A secondary site, Blue Stonehenge, located over a mile away along the River Avon, likely functioned for cremations before its stones were relocated to Stonehenge. The second stage saw the introduction of towering sarsen stones, sourced from the Marlborough Downs, around 20 miles away. Smoothly dressed and meticulously arranged into a horseshoe of five trilithons, surrounded by a sarsen circle, these stones were connected by lintels with sophisticated mortise and tenon joints. At the same time, blue stones were integrated into arcs, known as Q and R holes, and later redistributed. Nearby, a settlement with organised wooden circles may have served as a base for builders. During the third stage, a ceremonial avenue was constructed, linking Stonehenge to the River Avon. This avenue aligns with solstitial events and might trace the Bluestones' transport route. It reinforces the idea of Stonehenge's connections to broader rituals and celestial observations. The final stages focused on rearranging the Bluestones into a central circle and oval, Later, pits called Y and Z holes were dug, possibly for future stones or ceremonial purposes. By this time, Stonehenge had transformed into the iconic megalithic structure, symbolising both architectural ingenuity and spiritual significance, maintaining its legacy as a focal point for the communities of ancient Britain. According to latest genetic research, the builders of Stonehenge were predominantly descendants of Neolithic farmers, who migrated from Anatolia around 4000 BC. Genetic studies have revealed that these early farmers introduced revolutionary changes to Britain's society, including agriculture and monument-building traditions. Their DNA, analysed through maternal mitochondrial lines and Y-chromosome markers, indicates a strong connection to populations in Iberia and the Mediterranean. The Neolithic farmers brought with them haplogroups such as H, a prominent maternal lineage that originated in southwest Europe suggesting their migration routes spanned across the Iberian Peninsula before heading northward to Britain. This movement likely included seafaring along coastlines and island hopping across the Mediterranean, showcasing advanced navigation skills. Evidence of their genetic profile strongly aligns with those of Iberian, Neolithic populations, who are themselves linked to Anatolian origins. These farmers interwove their cultural practices with megalithic traditions, evident in the grand structures of Stonehenge. On the Y-chromosome side, haplogroup I2A has been associated with Britain's Neolithic male lineages, a marker tied to early European populations. This particular haplogroup, while diminished in the subsequent Bronze Age, illustrates the initial genetic makeup of Stonehenge's creators. However, a notable feature of their genetic history is the lack of substantial admixture with Britain's pre-existing Mesolithic hunter-gatherers. Instead, a near-complete genetic replacement occurred suggesting that the incoming farming groups entered as larger, dominant populations, eclipsing the smaller numbers of native hunter-gatherers. The lineage of these original builders, however, was later overthrown by another population wave with the arrival of Bell Beaker people around 2500 BC, further marking Britain's dynamic genetic history. Genetic analysis reveals that this transition marked the second major population shift in Britain, resulting in profound changes to both the genetic and cultural landscapes of the island. The Bell Beaker people, originating from the Eurasian steppe, introduced a distinct genetic signature dominated by Y-chromosome haplogroup R1b. This marker became predominant among the male population in Britain, replacing the earlier I2a, 
haplogroup that had been characteristic of the Neolithic builders. R1b arrival signifies a massive demographic influx, believed to have swept across Europe rapidly, facilitated by advanced mobility technologies like wagons and horses. On the maternal side, mitochondrial studies show a diversity of haplogroups, though the genetic contribution from Neolithic lineages diminished almost entirely. Unlike their predecessors, the Bell Beaker population brought traits associated with steppe ancestry, including lighter hair and eye colours. The replacement is theorised to have occurred due to several factors, including competitive advantages in lifestyle and technology. The Bell Beaker people's use of metal tools, particularly bronze, and their adaption to various terrains may have provided them an ecological edge. Additionally, their herding and farming techniques were likely more suited to the climate and soils of Britain. This shift wasn't necessarily violent. DNA evidence points to the rapid decline of the Neolithic population even before the Bell Beaker migration, suggesting that societal factors weakened the first farmers, making room for the rise of the new steppe-influenced culture. This event reshaped Britain's genetic heritage to one that endures today. As mentioned earlier, the DNA analysis of the Neolithic communities responsible for constructing Stonehenge highlights a fascinating connection to the Mediterranean. These early farmers, whose ancestry traces back to Anatolia, took a circuitous route to Britain, travelling westward across the Mediterranean before finally reaching the island's shores. This movement aligns with a broader migration trend around 6000 BC, where Anatolian groups spread farming techniques and megalithic traditions across Europe. Genetic evidence reinforces this Mediterranean link. These findings suggest they migrated along coastal routes, potentially island hopping through the Mediterranean, reaching Iberia before moving north through France. This hypothesis is supported by archaeological evidence showing early farming settlements in these regions that preceded Britain's Neolithic transformation. Their genetic legacy also includes Y-chromosome haplogroups, such as G2A, which were common among Anatolian farmers. This Mediterranean migratory route is further substantiated by architectural and technological parallels, linking Stonehenge to megalithic sites in Iberia and the Mediterranean basin. The construction techniques behind Stonehenge reveal remarkable ingenuity, considering the available tools and resources during the Neolithic period. As briefly discussed earlier, two primary types of stones were used in its construction. The massive sarsen stones and the smaller but equally important bluestones sourced from distinct locations and requiring separate methods of transportation and installation. The larger sarsen stones, weighing up to 25 tonnes each, were sourced locally, approximately 25 kilometres from the site near the Marlborough Downs. Research suggests that these stones were likely transported using a combination of sleighs and rollers, with wooden logs placed under the stones to reduce friction. Teams of builders likely used ropes made from plant fibres and coordinated labour to drag the stones across the terrain. Once on site, the stones were shaped using hammer stones. Archaeological evidence shows deliberate tooling marks that suggest precision in crafting mortise and tenon joints, which were used to interlock the massive uprights and lintels into a stable framework. The smaller blue stones, originating over 225 kilometres away in the Preseli Hills of Wales, presented an even more complex challenge. Transporting these two to four-ton stones over such a vast distance would have required advanced logistical planning. The most plausible theory involves a combination of land and river transport. The stones may have been dragged to the coast, floated on rafts along rivers or coastal waters, and then hauled overland to Stonehenge. Evidence of similar long-distance movements of materials in other Neolithic cultures supports this theory. Positioning the stones demanded a sophisticated understanding of engineering, Builders dug deep pits to secure the standing stones and used ramps and counterweights to tilt them upright. The final alignment of the stones with celestial events, such as the solstices, reflects advanced surveying and planning techniques, underscoring the architectural and cultural sophistication of Stonehenge's creators. The purpose of Stonehenge remains one of the most debated topics in archaeology, yet its alignment with the solstices provides strong clues about its intended function. The layout of the monument demonstrates a deliberate understanding of celestial movements. The central axis of the structure aligns precisely with the sunrise on the summer solstice and the sunset on the winter solstice, suggesting that its builders were deeply attuned to seasonal changes. This solar alignment implies that Stonehenge may have functioned as an astronomical observatory. The Neolithic people, dependent on agriculture, would have needed an accurate calendar to track planting and harvesting seasons. By observing the sun's position relative to the stones, 
they could mark significant points in the year, such as solstices and equinoxes. The acoustic properties of Stonehenge have also drawn increasing attention in recent studies. Researchers suggest that its unique arrangement of stones was not only designed for visual impact, but also to alter the way sound operates within the space. The circular layout of the sarsen stones, along with the way the blue stones are strategically placed, creates an environment where echoes and reverberations are amplified. This enhancement could have deepened experiences during rituals, heightening feelings of awe or connection to the spiritual realm. Even more intriguingly, the blue stones imported from the pre selly Hills in Wales exhibit properties that produce metallic, bell-like sounds when struck. These ringing rocks may have served as functional instruments, adding another layer of meaning to the ceremonies held at Stonehenge. The healing stone theory adds a compelling perspective to why the builder communities went to such extraordinary lengths to transport the heavy blue stones from afar. One of the more fascinating ideas is that Stonehenge functioned as a prehistoric healing centre. Evidence for this interpretation comes from the human skeletal remains uncovered at the site, many of which exhibit signs of disease, deformities, or physical injuries. The presence of these ailments could indicate that people travelled great distances to seek relief from the supposed magical properties of the blue stones. This theory gains further traction when considering the prevailing belief systems of Neolithic societies. At the time, natural features and geological materials were often imbued with spiritual significance, and the blue stones may have been regarded as symbols of rejuvenation or metaphysical power. The relationship between Stonehenge and nearby structures such as Woodhenge and Durrington Walls introduces a profound duality within the Neolithic spiritual landscape. While Stonehenge has often been associated with death and the afterlife, its wooden counterpart, Woodhenge, may have represented life, fertility, and the earthly domain. This concept of dualism appears to echo broader cosmological beliefs held by ancient civilizations where wood symbolised vitality and transience, while stone signified permanence and immortality. The Durrington Wall settlement near Woodhenge provides additional context. Evidence suggests it was a hub of human activity, and possibly home to seasonal feasting events, likely celebrating life and community. One of the most astonishing aspects of Stonehenge is the mathematical knowledge embedded in its design. Scholars have identified that its layout incorporates advanced geometric concepts, including Pythagorean triangles, long before the mathematical principles were formally documented in history. For instance, the Sarsen circle shows precise spacing and alignment, demonstrating an understanding of symmetry and ratios. The heelstone and other markers point to specific celestial events, highlighting an impressive grasp of the movement of the sun and moon. This level of accuracy suggests that the builders possessed not only theoretical mathematical skills, but also the practical expertise to implement large-scale construction with remarkable precision. It raises questions about how such knowledge was transmitted, and whether this expertise was unique to the culture that built Stonehenge. The integration of mathematical principles into the monument showcases a society deeply attuned to both natural cycles and abstract intellectual frameworks. The connection between Stonehenge and water rituals offers another layer of understanding regarding its construction and use. The alignment of Stonehenge's avenue directly connects it to the nearby River Avon, leading to speculation that water was integral to the rituals performed at the site. Recent findings suggest that the river-linked processional route may have functioned as an important ceremonial path. It was a place where practical needs intersected with spiritual beliefs, cementing its role as a central focus for Neolithic society in Britain. Coming back to the disappearance of their creators, I would like to inform you about a new research which shed some light on this. According to scientists, a crucial clue in solving this puzzle lies in the discovery of Yersinia pestis, the bacterium responsible for plague, in remains dating back 4,000 years. This finding marks the earliest recorded evidence of plague in Britain, suggesting that a prehistoric pandemic could have profoundly impacted the farmers. Similar to later pandemics like the Black Death, this outbreak likely caused widespread devastation, possibly wiping out up to 60% of the population. Such a dramatic demographic collapse would have destabilised their society, leaving it vulnerable to external influences. At the same time, steppe herders from Eurasia began migrating westward. The scale of the population replacement suggests that the pandemic, rather than warfare alone, was the decisive factor. This remarkable convergence of plague, migration and technological change reshaped Britain, extinguishing one culture while laying the foundation for another. Recent ground-penetrating radar scans have revealed tantalising evidence that additional stones or structures may lie hidden beneath the surface of Stonehenge. 
These buried features suggest that the site could be far larger and more complex than previously thought. Some researchers speculate that these hidden elements could represent earlier phases of construction or ritual activity, potentially predating the visible stones. Others propose that these buried structures might have served as foundations for wooden posts, ceremonial markers, or even sacred enclosures. If confirmed, these findings could radically alter our understanding of Stonehenge's purpose and function. Was it part of a larger ceremonial complex, or did it evolve from a more ancient, now-buried structure? Future excavations hold the promise of uncovering new clues about the spiritual and social practices of its builders, shedding light on whether Stonehenge was a single-purpose monument or part of a broader sacred landscape.